dark in here, isn't it, darling? Do, haven't they paid the electric bill or something? How are we going to have a meet? Oh, that's oh, okay. Yeah. My fellow thespians, I thank you most heartily for attending this extraordinary committee meeting of the Pendant Players in order that we may discuss our next production. Hang on, she's in the chair, she's supposed to say all that. Madam Chair, do I have your permission to hold the floor? As I was saying, I feel we need to. We haven't had apologies yet. We've got to have apologies first. Are there any apologies? Uh, yes. Paul can't make it again. He's in the US again on important business again. Uh, what is it this time? Uh, he's at the White House apparently <coughs> judging the beauty contest. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Bernard Law Messiter? He's not here either. I have Please, can we get on? There's no need to be like that, Larry. I was only saying. Oh, I'm sick. Hello. Hi, this is Bernard Lord Messiter here. Uh, look, I'm frightfully sorry, but I, I'm not going to be able to make it tonight after all. Now, shall I be missing anything frightfully important? Uh, yes, well, we are discussing the autumn production, Bernard. So, if you want to be in that, only you really ought to come along. The, the last production that you were in, you didn't attend a single rehearsal, and it was very unfair on Larry. Well, as you know, my life is impossible to say. I mean, I was just about to leave for this evening's meeting, when what should happen but this month's issue, the Iron Man on News suddenly dropped through the letterbox, taking me utterly by surprise. So, Mr. Mr. what could I do? I mean, Heather said, well, you can't go to the meeting now. I mean, we don't know yet what's in this month's magazine, do we? Now look here, Bernard. No attendance at rehearsal, no role in the play. Is that understood? Now, can we please get on? If there are no more apologies, I haven't got all that. Oh, no. What Oh, I say, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, I'm 
data. I was at a lunch meeting. <laughs> Have I missed much? Larry was just telling us about his next production. It's very avant-garde. Yes. Avant-garde? <coughs> Since when has Shakespeare been avant-garde? <laughs> Shakespeare? Well, I may have mentioned to him in the pub that I was going to do a Shakespeare next. Well, it is three years since our last production. And look how that ended. Well, I know that everyone was dead on stage at the end, <laughs> including poor old Neville, but he was 88. And overall, I think the audience found it quite funny. I had a lot of very positive comments. I like thank Christ that's all the Yeah, critics weren't very complimentary. I kept them cutting from the Cheddar Valley. The leading man and Neville Rochester performed the role throughout as though he were pushing an invisible wheelbarrow around the stage. That was his interpretation of the tragic flaw inherent in his character. Well, if we can't do another acorn, I'd rather do a Shakespeare than something avant-garde. Which play did you have in mind? Well, there's only one Shakespeare worth doing, darlings. Romeo and Juliet! Oh, goody, goody! I've always wanted to play Juliet. <laughs> Just wonder, wouldn't Leah be more suitable? Leah? How on earth am I going to cast Leah, for goodness sake? Oh, my God. Did they tell me Leah? Fantastic! There's a brilliant storm scene in Leah. <laughs> another hopeful who's dressed up in costume for the audition. And what piece are you going to give us today? Well, we thought we would do the love scene. Uh, I see. I, I'm a little unclear. Was this the Romeo and Juliet love scene that you had in mind? Do we look like Romeo and Juliet? Oh, well, no, of course not. But why are you wearing these costumes, then? It says here, a pair of Star Wars lovers. 
It's a pair of star-crossed lovers. And anyway, since when were Darth Vader and Princess Leia lovers? Can we please continue with the auditions? Next! Royal 
Shakespeare Company, the National Theatre. No, no, Wedmore Theatre. <laughs> Wedmore Theatre. Oh, well, that's obviously very impressive. <laughs> Wedmore Theatre. How long ago? Well, it was 1997. Oh. Twenty years ago. Oh, pity. Too old. Next! <laughs> Does anybody have a Phillips screwdriver? <laughs> a Phillips screwdriver, anybody? Uh, Larry, we're going to have to cut the scene where all the blooms come down onto the audience. Why? I, I, I haven't got the tool to bend the machine that blows the blooms up. Oh. Oh well. Larry, <laughs> what? I do have a younger version of myself. <laughs> Would he do? Well, well, I think he'll do very nicely. Next! Right. And what, and what pieces have you played? Now then, I've done Juliet. Oh, how will it go? Oh, well, now then, now we're talking. Gonna be six opening dies, but... Oh, too old. Next! No, I'm gonna be. Why? What about the kids? They go to acting class. They don't need to learn. Yes, and what about that one there? How is he on the big soliloquies? Hey! Is the sheep a big daft lump? They must be coming in for a Western Superman Oh, 
Well, there's no need, darling, no need. Look, you and I go back such a long time. We've worked together so many times over the years. I know you're acting intimately by now. Does that mean that I've got the part? Well, I'll certainly give it some very careful consideration. Exactly. So that I can see what's going on on stage uh, from here in the green room. But, but the audience can't see us, right? No, Alistair, can you hear me? Oh, not you again. You can't come in here, Moppy. There are people walking around in their underwear. Oh, I don't mind. Come on. Alistair, testing. One, two, three. Can you hear me? She is. She deliberately broke my table leg. Now, right. Now, we have very little rehearsal time left, <coughs> so I'm afraid we're going to have to rehearse here on stage while the backstage crew are constructing the set and putting up the lighting and the sound, etc., etc., etc. So I will need everybody, and I mean everybody, to be absolutely focused. Yes, yes Larry. Has everybody learnt their lines? Yes, yes Larry. Larry. And Roger? Roger? Are you going to stop drinking for me? <laughs> Whatever makes you think I've been <coughs> drinking for you? <laughs> and Bridget, are you absolutely sure that you know your lines? Better than that. I've got them with me. <laughs> and uh, you'll be caught. Are you speaking to me? Yes, yes, you're the courts. The rest of what? The chorus. Darling, you are the chorus. Now, where's Bernard Lord Messiter? You know, he's supposed to be. Oh, happy letter. He can't come to this rehearsal. Something about Heather finding an ant in their bedroom. An ant? Just the one? Well, apparently, but you know what she's like. Anyway, why can't you stand it? It's because I've got a drink for you. Alistair, can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now I've explained, you press to speak and then release when you want to listen. I can't hear you, Alistair. Testing, one, two, three. Right, now what we need to do is when you want to speak, press the button. When you want to hear my reply, release it. 
press to speak, release to listen. Margaret! Margaret! Alistair! Margaret! Margaret! Yeah. Yeah. You mean the stage manager? I thought you were supposed to be prompt. Um, I think she's going to be both. Yeah, um, Alistair! <coughs> Alistair, I can't hear you. Why don't we do it as a pantomime? That can save 
consists entirely of sending up. Well, you do realise, don't you, darling, that traditionally in a pantomime, the main power characters have to cross-dress. That is, the uh, principal boy is generally played by a young woman. And of course, it's the other way around. I'm dressing as a young boy. Oh, God. In fact, I rather <laughs> fancy myself in Elizabethan doublet and hose. Hey, the young Italian Renaissance hero. Yes, darling, yes, darling, yes, darling. But we still need actual young people to make it a success. Oh, I'm sure with you directing, Larry, it will be a success. Success is relative. The more success you have, the more relatives you acquire. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, old boy? I thought I told you to confiscate his hip flask. Oh, oh I heard uh, uh, some fool put the step ladders on the stairs, and I fell over them. Oh, well, look, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that if, if you're if you're too ill to go on and too much pain, I mean, I'm sure that we can find a replacement for you. I mean, there must be someone in the audience who has some some knowledge of acting and hasn't had a skin full. No, no, Auntie, all right. We need each time. Nothing that a healthy 50 year old body can't recover from. The reason why so many 50 year old men have so many aches and pains is they're actually 60. <laughs> <laughs>
chasing easy women. <laughs> An easy woman? Is that when you have the morals of a man? Chasing easy women never did anybody any harm. It's the catching them that does the damage. True. <laughs> I can't imagine why he takes the risk. What can he be thinking? Thinking? What's thought got to do with it? Say, Romeo, if you gave him a penny for his thought, she'd still get change. I've told you 50,000 times, Scott. Exaggerating. Uh oh, look who's coming. <laughs> I suppose, <laughs> I'm, I suppose one of your lot is responsible for this. Nah, nothing to do with us, mate. Looks like typical capital handiwork to me. I say, I say, I say. I do believe this fellow was born upside down. Well, I never. What makes you think that? Because his nose runs and his feet smell it. <laughs> Ow! Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb at you, sir. But do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Because if so, the salt caps are not Look, in all the fight, I just cut my thumb on my sword. Oh, a man who refused to fight he used to be called a coward. Now they call him a bachelor. <laughs> is that the same as a coxcomb? Mm, no, I was just calling you a bachelor, and it's not the same as a coxcomb. Then I shall certainly fight you, sir. Come on. You can't use that on stage. It's real. Of course it's real. It's magnificent. No, it's illegal to use real weapons on stage unless it's required and necessary for theatrical performances and rehearsals. Well, it is required and necessary. No, you'll have to use this one instead. <laughs> Wait. very much. Hey, what were you doing having a computer app during our performance? The Capulets? But we 
We hate the Capulets, they're our sworn enemy. And besides, I'm not in the mood for partying. Hey, I hear there's going to be some easy women in the tonight. I'm done with easy women. There's only one woman for me now. Who? Hey. Rosaline. I'm madly in love with Rosaline. Does she love you back? My back? <laughs> <laughs> so ask me no more what it is that ails me so. What is but love? But love? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> 
Why are you looking so pleased? I thought you hated husbands. Well, I certainly hated all of mine. <laughs> How many have you had? Well, I've had three. First was the worst. After our honeymoon, he said he felt like a new man. I said I did too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't blame anyone, actually. It was love at first sight. And then I took a second look. <laughs> After uh, on our wedding night, uh, I said I do. And then I made damn sure I let him know that I don't. <laughs> oh, the second husband. Yes, well, he and I were perfectly happy for 20 years. And then we met. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he was, he was incredibly boring. I didn't pay him much attention. You know, I always think that men are like car parking spaces. The best ones are all gone, and the rest are too small. <laughs> what about the third one? Oh, third one. I had terrible luck with him. My best friend ran away without him. <laughs> he, was just, he was just plain stupid. Born on the 2nd of April, a day too late. <laughs> Well, consider this, my girl. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. A dog is a man's best friend. Which is the dumber sex? <laughs> so, what about this county? Does he come from a good family like I do? Well, now his parents had four sons before he was born. The first was a banker. Second went to jail as well. <laughs> the third, now he was a graduate. But the fourth couldn't find a job either. Now you're just being I know. Come on, Doc. We need to get you ready for this party. If I don't have you look your prettiest and your finest, your dad will have my guts for garters. Oh, I want to think of it. Don't go eating any of those fattening little appetizers at the party. What are appetizers? Those are the little things you keep on eating till you lose your appetite. Come on. <laughs> Let's 
I'm mistaken, thou art a Montague, who art thou? I think you mean who for art thou? No. Oh, no, I don't. No, no, we don't want to. <laughs> That's our fight. Yeah. Hold it. Leave him alone. He's not got any breath. You. No. Oh, oh, filthy boy. You dare to throw your sword against my guests and in my house? How dare you? <laughs> but my uncle, he's a monster. our mortal foe. What have you done, you ninny? Holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. Pushing <laughs> <laughs> pilgrims ready to stand to smooth that rough touch of the tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? I pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though perhaps a prayer to take. Then move not, while my prayer's effect I take. Darling, they're in our ringtone. <laughs> but, 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 madam, your mother creeps a word. Thus, from thy lips, by thine my own sin is purged. Then have my lips sin and Sin from my lips, oh, the trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. Kissed like a book. Who was that? Uh, his name is Romeo, and he's a Montague. My only love sprung from my only hate. Pray so, dearie. Best forget him, and before there's trouble. <laughs>
Ivy, the camera's turned round. But, but they can't see us, right? No, no, but we can see who's in the audience. Oh, I, yes. I say, who's that man over there that looks like a chimpanzee? The, Where? Mm, there. Oh, you mean next, sitting next to the woman who looks like a horse? Yes. Aren't they the parents of the child that was in the last panto? You know, the one who looked like a cross between a horse and a chimpanzee? <gasps> and who's that horrible person over there? That is one of our front of house people. Oh, well, in future, I think next time he better be rather back of house. Really, Larry, I do think that's. A no, bit... no, 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 who's that person there? That's Wayne. Oh. oh. Thank goodness they can't see or hear us. Well, I know.
Here in Western Supermare, local people are reeling from the effects of an outbreak of violence between two apparently feral gangs of young people, the Montagues and the Capulets, who have literally torn the place apart, pursuing their feud. It were horrible. They was all up and down the seafront. One of them even drove over the road sign with his motorbike. There were also reports of a member from one of the gangs being banished to Western Supermare from Verona. Not a bloody another one. These Veronians coming over here taking our jobs, stealing our women. Half of them can't even speak summer. Sum, Western Supermare-ish. Well, there you have it. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. But that's Western Supermare weather for you. Back to you in the studio in Verona, Sanjeev.
Do you mean why did you so? Yeah. 
dark that appears with it all hollow of thine ear. Night as she sings on yonder pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn. No nightingale. <laughs> Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds of yonder east. Light's candles are burnt out, and jocund days dance tiptoed on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight, I know it, I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torch bearer. In light of you, I am a gone. Let me be taken. Let me be put to death. I am the <laughs> So thou wilt have it so. I say yon grey is not the morning's eye. It is but the pale reflex on Cynthia's brow. Nor that's not the note, the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death, and welcome! Juliet wills it so. How is my love? Let's talk. It is not day. It is, it is. High hence be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This does not so, for she divides us. And now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light. More dark and dark our woes. Thou art so lovely. Yes, I know I am. Not <laughs> <Thank> you. <coughs> Well, uh, madam, your mother, lady mother is coming to your bedchamber. Farewell, farewell. One kiss and I'll descend.
true apothecary. Thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, I... <laughs> What's this? A cup closed in my true love's hand? Oh, Jesus! Drunk all the time, no friendly Just that the time was wrong 